Hallelujah. Welcome to Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church. And we are welcoming you to our Good Friday services. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. And we want to welcome our praise team to kick off our services. Tune in because our preachers will be preaching the last seven words of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, give God some praise. Good Friday. Out on Calvary's cross, he died for you and I. Yeah. I shall wear a crown. Yes, Lord. I shall wear a crown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it's all over. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. <laughs> When it's all over, I shall see his face. Yes, hallelujah. Yes, I shall see his face. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to put on my robe, tell the story how I made it over. I got a mama on the other side. I'm going. Somebody said, when you going to do that, pass along. Soon as I get home. Jackie, if you don't mind, sing a verse for me. I shall wear a crown. Say it like you mean it now, Jackie. Crown. Don't play with it. Shall wear a crown. Yes, you
Good Friday service. We should be shouting right there because all that Christ went through for us, uh, watching the passion of the Christ, none of that really gives you the true detail. They give you a snapshot shot of what Christ really went through for us. And he did it all for you and I uh, so that we may have a right to the tree of life. And we thank you again for tuning in with us on this Good Friday service. Get your family together and sit back and relax. And Throw us a, a amen or a hallelujah sometimes. Type of amen, type of hallelujah in sometimes. Flood those comments section on, the, on this Good Friday to show our Lord and Savior how good we are, how great we are, how much we honor for what he has done for us that he paid the price in full at Calvary's cross. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you that you went to Calvary for us. Lord, but we thank you that it didn't stop at Calvary because on the third day, you got up with all power in your hand. Lord, we thank you for that because without the cross in you, there will be no us. We ask that you will bless every minister on today, Lord, that, they, that you will speak through them right now, Lord, that you will be satisfied. Lord, we thank you that you will get the glory that somebody, because of what you have done for us, that somebody will say, what must I do to be saved? Lord, we thank you for this Good Friday. Lord, we thank you for Sunday morning, too. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. My order of service I'll, I'll go as follow. We're going to be preaching uh, uh, Jesus' last seven, seven words at the cross. The first word that we'll have is, uh, the first scripture that we'll have is Luke 23 and 34. That'll be done by our own minister, Eris. Luke 23, 42 to 43. That'll be done by our own minister, Sarah. John 19, 25 and 26. That'll be done by our own minister, Corey Stevens. We, again, we thank you for for tuning in with us on today, and we ask that you would sit back and be attentive. Get your Bibles out that you may see the, the, the lessons that we have today for you, what Jesus said on the cross. Amen. It is truly an honor and a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. For those of you that is at home watching on your computer screens, on your TV screens, if you all would go with me to the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. And I would like to give God honor, who is truly the head of my life, to my pastor and my co-pastor, to all the ministerial staff, to the pastors that's watching, greetings and blessings to you all. Amen. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. As I was studying the text, I had to look up the word forgiveness, and the word forgiveness simply means the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. I'm going to read it again. The word forgiveness means the action or process of forgiving or being forgiven. 
Then I had to look at what this process means. It is a series of progressive and steps by which an end is obtained. Meaning when you forgive someone, when you forgive something, it has to come to an end. In the beginning of the text, it says, Father, forgive them. Who was Jesus referring to when he began to pray this prayer? Jesus was praying for the Roman soldiers, those who talked about him and didn't believe in who he was, those that crucified him. My brothers and sisters, with everything going on in the world, people dying, people getting sick, not knowing when there's going to be their last day or their last time on earth, I just simply want to encourage you and tell you that the time is now and it's time to forgive. I just want to encourage you all at home watching. The time is now. If Jesus could forgive everyone that did him wrong, how, how they talked about him, scandalized his name, why can't we forgive those that has hurt us? In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, it simply says, Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Meaning our forgiveness towards one another reflects God's grace, graciousness, forbearance, and generous forgiveness towards us. God's forgiveness is full, free, and forever. And we should follow the pattern Christ set when he forgave us graciously. We need to understand that forgiveness is why Jesus died on the cross. Forgiveness is why Jesus died on the cross. Forgiveness is why Jesus allowed us to see another day. Y'all, I don't know about you at home watching, but I simply want to encourage you and tell you it is simply time to forgive. Forgive those that have hurt you. Forgive those that have talked about you. Forgive those that have scandalized your name. Forgive those that turned their backs on you. It is simply time for you to learn to go to God and say, God, help me to forgive we need to understand that forgiveness will take us a long way forgiveness will show the merciful heart of God we have all been through some things in life I can attest to being talked about hurt talking about others having my name scandalized but I had to learn for myself to go to God and ask God for forgiveness and to forgive those that I have done wrong I don't know about you all, but I want God to forgive me. So therefore, I had to learn to forgive others. A few steps of forgiveness I have learned is to acknowledge the situation. See, some of us don't acknowledge what we have done wrong to others. Some of us don't acknowledge the situation, the issues that we have caused upon others. And I just want to throw this at you. Sometimes we don't even know that we're hurting somebody with the words that we say. But I need y'all to know that as at home, to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me for my wrongdoings. We need to learn how to accept the situation, forgive the situation, and we need to learn how to move forward and not look back. A lot of us say we know how to forgive people, but when we say we forgive, we continuously talking about the situation. We go on to the next person talking to them about the same situation. Well, here it is. You have said that God, I ask you for forgiveness, but yet you're still talking about the same thing, the same situation. I need y'all to tap on your screens on tonight, on today to say it's time time to forgive the thing I like most about this scripture is even in agony Jesus' concern was the forgiveness of those who counted him out he even prayed for both these on the cross he even prayed for the Roman soldiers who mocked him, spit on him, beat him, yanked out his beard, whipped him and prayed for those that put a crown of thorns over his head and nailed him to the cross. He even prayed for forgiveness for the angry mob that mocked him, called him and called for his crucifixion. If Jesus could forgive them through everything he went through, why is it so hard for us to forgive the small things in life? My brothers and sisters, it is time to forgive those that has hurt you. It's time to forgive those that talked about you. It's time to forgive those that left you when times got rough. It's time to forgive those that hurt you in the past. Those that counted you out. It's time to forgive the things that happened. It's time to forgive. Forgiveness is learning to forgive others to forgive yourself. Forgiveness will set you free. 
Forgiveness will help you to move forward on your spiritual path. Forgiveness is a path to peace. I don't know about you, but I want my peace. Forgiveness can help you release the pain that you've been holding on to. Forgiveness is counting on the love and pray for those that has betrayed your trust in your relationship. Forgiveness is fully forgiving the person that hurt you. Forgiveness is knowing we all have flaws and make mistakes. Forgiveness is moving forward and not looking back. Forgiveness is not doing others how they have done you. Forgiveness is simply pray, accept, move forward, and don't look back. My brothers and sisters, I'm glad that the man that died on the cross for me, he forgive my sins. Whether I know I'm doing wrong, whether I think I'm doing wrong, I'm glad to serve a man that died on the cross for me. Nails in his hands and nails in his feet. I thank you, God, for forgiving me at all times, God. And for that, God, I just want to say, Lord, I love you on today. So my brothers and sisters, as I am preparing to go to my seat, I just simply want to tell you and encourage you and let you know the time is now and it's time to forgive. God bless you all. Amen, amen. Hallelujah on this good Friday. Thank you God for allowing us to be still here. On today I will be talking about salvation and my question, my title is, is salvation important? And my scripture will be coming from Luke 23, chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. Is salvation important? First of all, what is salvation? A lot of people say, yeah, I'm saved and this and that, and I know about salvation, but what is it? Actually, to put it in layman's terms, it's a relationship, having a relationship with Jesus, believing that Jesus the Christ has the power of, del of deliverance to save our soul from sin and its consequences. Salvation, being saved, being redeemed by the blood of Jesus, being reconciled back to God. Salvation, salvation, is salvation important? That's my question on today, and I want to help someone and learning about salvation on this Good Friday. So in having salvation, you are saved. You are saved. How can I be saved? Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. No flip-flops, no backflips, no putting a certain amount of money in ties, no doing this and that. By faith. If you believe that Jesus hung, bled, and died for you, you are saved. Salvation is not hard. We don't want to make it too um, up here for people. Jesus was not over, talked over people's head. He talked, found them where they were. And that's what we need to do as believers of Christ on today. Our scripture reading starts at, first let me give you, there's, Jesus is on the cross. There's two thieves up there on the side of him. One is being a butthead, talking crap to Jesus. Read it, read it, read it in your leisure. And verse 39 says, one of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. This the butthead. So you're the Messiah, huh? Are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. He didn't know what he was asking for. He didn't even know who he was talking to. Sometimes you got to get away from people that ain't talking what you talking, that ain't believing what you believing. Have your circle of friends, but make it a small circle of friends. Amen? Amen. Verse, verse 40 says, but the other criminal protested, don't you fear God even when you are being sentenced to death? We deserve to die for our crimes. But this man here has done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. He knew. He knew who Jesus was. And, 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 and I was going through and reading, and I'm like, well, how did he know? Somebody had to give a testimony. Somebody had to say the goodness about Jesus. Why won't we share our testimony with people? We share everything else on social media. I wouldn't have known y'all was broke up if you hadn't posted it there. 
I wouldn't have known that you got cracked upside your head if you had to post it. How about we start posting some more about God's salvation, about God's love on our social media pages so we can get more people into the kingdom of God instead of having all this drama. Drama does nothing but cause more drama, amen? I am so glad this other thief who I fell in love with as I was reading this scripture over and over again, that this man has some serious faith. He's on the cross. He's getting ready to die. He didn't heard about Jesus. But he had faith. Faith. Faith and salvation go hand in hand. Because you got to believe that Jesus can save you. Faith. You got to have faith. This man had faith. He knew that he deserved to die, but he had heard something about Jesus. Something about the name of Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Talk about Jesus. Share Jesus with people. Share him with people. He had heard, I'm sure he heard about the miracles that Jesus had done. And he wanted to be in the kingdom of his. He knew that there was more to life than here on earth. This is not the end here. This is what we do now and we, uh, to see where we're going later in life. I myself am personally going to heaven. Ain't no if, ands, buts about it. I am going to heaven. I'm not going to hell. Hell was not meant for me. Hell was not meant for anyone that I'm connected to. So if you think you're going to hell and you're connected to me, no. 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 I'm trying to get all mine in and my enemies. Yep, and my enemies. God does not want any of us to be lost and unsaved. Amen. Amen. Talk about Jesus instead of that other stuff. Verse 42 says, Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me. Sometimes we're going through life and it feels like this is hitting us and that is hitting us. God, are you there? Are you there? And he's always there. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. Remember me, God. We should sing that song, Lord, remember me. Do not forget me. Remember little old me, Lord, even in my mess, remember me. Remember me. When you're saved and have salvation, you can say, Lord, remember me. Lord, I'm messing up, but Lord, remember me. Having salvation and being saved doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. We are still human, but we make less and less mistakes the more and further we get into our relationship with Christ. Are you still making the same mistakes? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm praying for you. It's a process. Everybody don't get it on the first try. Keep trying to quit smoking. Keep trying to quit drinking. Quit, keep trying to quit fornicating. It's a process. I'm praying with you and for you. Your salvation is so important. Death or life? It's just that simple. Heaven or hell? Told y'all already, I'm going to heaven. This man, this, this, this man, this thief, I haven't given him a name yet, but this thief has so much faith that he said, remember me, Lord. Now, mind you, most of all the Jesus' followers had already left. They ran because they were saying, they're killing people over there for believing in Jesus. He like, well, I'm already on the cross. I'm going to die, but I want to die in Christ. Woo, what a word right there, dying in Christ. He wasn't worried. He's like, look, I'm, it's, this is my darkest day right here. How about us sometimes we get in our darkest days and we think there is no, no hope? Still believe. Still believe and have faith. The thief had faith to believe that. He knew being on that cross was not the end. He knew that there was something more. Heaven, street paved with gold, being reconciled back with Christ. That's what we're striving for. That's what we're striving for. We have to have faith to believe that something better is coming. Something better is coming. We're in this pandemic. We've been in it over a year. We're tired of it, but we're still here. God is still keeping us. We done lost some on the way, but I pray that all of them was, was lost in Christ and in Christ. You know, we only get sad when people leave us when we know they ain't right. Because I don't want any of mine going to hell. Really, this dude, I was really starting to like him because he had the faith. He's like, I'm going to believe Christ. I'm going to believe everything that I heard about him and believe it. A lot of times we read the word of God, but we ain't, uh, we ain't believing it. 
We sit up there and say, yep, I believe God going to do it. Oh, can I borrow $100? I thought you said you believed God was going to do it. <sighs> anyway, this guy, the, the thief, got saved. 43 said, and Jesus replied, I assure you today, you will be with me in paradise. He got saved right there. All God, Jesus had to do was speak a word. Stop dying on the cross and spoke a word to this young man. The one with the faith. It, it reminded me of the song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Woo, Jesus. Blessed Assurance. You have to be sure about your salvation. Make sure you're sure of your salvation. Make sure you're sure of your family's salvation. Make sure you're sure that, that you are going to heaven. There's a benefit. Having salvation doesn't mean, like I said, you're not going to mess up. But Jesus, he's there for us all. He did it all for us on that cross. Hung, bled, and died. But on the third day, you know the story. He got up with all power in his hand. Not just a little bit, but all power in his hand. So don't say you can't live saved. Trust me, you can't. I'm a living witness. You can let that go, that go, all of that that's unpleasing unto God. Salvation. Ask the question, is salvation important? You bet your bottom dollar it is. You need salvation. We can't make it any further without salvation. Make sure you're sure of your salvation. I want to encourage you on today. Know that you say. Don't say, I ain't for sure. Know that you're saved. Know that he did it all for you. Know that you go mess up and say, Lord, forgive me for that. Lord, I know you got me. Lord, I love you. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Be sure of your salvation. Salvation is so important. I meet so many young people. I'm almost done. So many young people that say, I don't know if I'm saved. Yeah, let me explain it to you. Start remembering the verse, uh, Romans 10 and 9, so you can repeat it to somebody. We want everybody saved. In this midst of this pandemic, some people still don't know. Been in church 30 years if they say, Make sure of your salvation. Make sure of your salvation. The thief with that faith, oh, I love him. I love him a whole lot. He taught me a whole lot on this one. Amen. Thank you. Is salvation important? Yes, it is. Amen. St. John chapter number 19, verse 25 says, These things, therefore, the soldiers did. But there were standing by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and his disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto him, Mother, woman, behold thy son. And he said to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. For the next six minutes, I want to talk about a mama bear. A mama bear. A mama bear is a quote we use in my generation to describe the overcapacity amount of love that a mother has for her child. I know I might get beat up after somebody watches, but the first mother bear I know is my sister, my sister. Uh, her name is Jacquees. You can follow her on Facebook while you're watching. Sister Jacquees, uh, Tiana Stevens. Um, uh, my sister has a few children that she did not birth, but they're her children by love and by right. And you can say nothing about her adult children will be cracking jokes in the family, in the living room, and we'll say something about one of her children. And the next thing she'll do is stop laughing and say, don't say nothing about my child. Uh, the next mother bear that I know real close with is my best friend, female best friend, evangelist Jackie Johnson. She say, you can bother me, but I don't want you saying nothing to my son James. If somebody want me to put my sword and my salvation down, bother my baby. Jesus here in John chapter number 19 is dying on the cross of Calvary and Mama Bear is there. Not only is Mama, there, Mama Bear there, 
But the text says that Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Jesus' aunt are all there. The golden girls are there watching Christ die on the cross. The reason why I call them the golden girls is because the color gold represents compassion, and it represents uh, 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 honor, and it represents royalty. So even though the people around them may not have knew who Christ was, these folks knew that even though Jesus was still in his flesh and in his humanity, he was still God. And so here it is uh, on the cross in John chapter 19. The reality is Mary is watching her perfect and innocent son die. Christ loved his mother so much that he fixed a problem without her even asking for it, Pastor Long. And if we would be, to be honest this morning, uh, we can attest to the fact that there are some things that God done done for me that I didn't even ask for. If you just be real with your boy for four more minutes, did you ever ask God, Lord, would you wake me up in the morning? Did you even pray the prayer last night? Then now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. But did you ask him to get you up? Or did he just do it on his own? And if you can be honest, he done done some things in my life that I ain't asked for. So he gives Mary a son. And this is what bothered me, Pastor Long. According to the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus had four other brothers. You can find that uh, in Matthew chapter number 13, verse 55. The Bible says that Jesus had four other brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Jude. But he leaves his mother under the spiritual and physical care of somebody else. Now, could it be? Could it be that they were not ready to lead as John was? Could it be that they were too young to provide for their widowed mother as the Jewish custom required? Or could it be that at one of Jesus' worst moments of his life, John was the only man there and available who Jesus was close to. And my dear friends, I want to suggest to you that sometimes in the darkest moments of your life, the folk that you expect to be there won't be there. But I want to testify to somebody today and tell you just like Genesis, God always have a ram in the bush. He uses who and what is ever available. Jesus here shows affection to his mother even in his darkest hours. Some theologians argue that Christ called her woman not to disrespect her, but he called her woman to defend her. He didn't want people knowing her true identity because they were sticking together with him. And if they're going to kill me, then they're going to kill my mother. Mary is having such a painful experience, but Jesus in his painful experience finds a place in his heart to look out for his mother. Ain't it something how you can be going through something all by yourself and you still find yourself helping somebody else? Christ is dying, but he stops dying to show affection for his mama. Have you ever said, I ain't giving nobody nothing and you only got $20 and they asked for 10 of it? When you're going through something, God will give you the ability because he's in you to help somebody else. It could be because you're guilty of being on the cross <laughs> and have the love of God in your heart. Mary knew that he was dying but wouldn't stay dead. She acknowledged a new aftermath, but John accepted the new accountability. Now, I want to ask you a question as I go to my seat. Could you imagine Jesus giving you the responsibility of taking care of his mama? Yeah, if, your, if, if Mary was anything like Joyce, uh, Mary knows that she can depend on certain kids. Mary knows that whatever she needed, that Christ, her firstborn, had her back. And she says, I'm going to sit here and weep to my son in his death, but I know he's coming back. So Jesus tells John, John, look out for my mama. And we have a responsibility because motherhood is not just a job, it's not a title, but it's a ministry and a great 
responsibility. As I go to my seat, uh, the late great Tupac Shakur wrote a song that says, Dear Mama, don't you know that I love you and I place no one above you? Boys to men said, Mama, you know I love you. You're the queen of my heart. Mama, I just want you to know that loving you is like food to my soul. And the Jackson 5 put it best when they said, Mama, just call my name and I'll be there. I want to encourage you that if you have a mama, you need to love on her while the breath is still in her body. Give God a hand clap of praise. So I've been tasked with the fourth sin from the cross. Matthew 27 and 46. Matthew 27 and 46. These are the words that you will find recorded. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. This is to say, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Anguish means extreme pain or distress of the mind or body. Here is the fourth sin from the cross. Jesus had been in agony on the cross for about six hours at this time. It was painful, a pain that we really can't even imagine. Uh, but now we see that he transitioned here. He started out with Minister Eric saying, Father, but now he's saying, my God, my God, uh, why have thy forsaken me? Because now he was in a place because he had went to the cross with all our sins on him. He was feeling lonely and by himself. It was a dark hour for him. And so now he cried out to, to, to my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This was a cry of dis distress, distress, not of distrust, Minister Corey. He never said nothing about, he didn't trust. He just said, why? He posed a question. He never accused him of doing anything. He said, why have thou forsaken me? It was a question mark at the end of that. He didn't say it, but he knew he was taking on the sins of the world. In Isaiah 53 and 6, he says, we are all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him all the iniquities of us all. Have you ever went through so much in life that you felt like that it was over? You had so much pain. You had trial and error. Every time you went to one thing, you, you got to another. You couldn't get out of one thing, Minister Corey, before you could get into another one. But I heard the Bible say that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then I heard David says that I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Uh, no matter how things may look, continue to push forward. You can't give up. Jesus stayed up on the cross. He stayed up on the cross because he knew it was for you and for I. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was already pre-told, prophesied in Psalms 22 and 1. It says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? so far from my cries of anguish. Jesus went through it all because of us. And all that we should be willing to go through anything for him. Time, this wasn't the first time, Minister Corey, that he had some anguish that he had been through. He had been dealing with anguish when his ministry started because folks was always after him. I can draw you to another time in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus said, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Uh, the Bible tells us that after he said that, that an angel appeared from heaven to give him strength. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and sweat started to roll like it was looking like blood and hit the ground. Because he understood that the cup could not pass him by. Because there was no other way for us to be redeemed but by Jesus and the cross. He did it. Look why he did it. So that you and I could get restored back with God. 
The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus went through it for all of us, Minister Corey, Sister Tamika, because of his love for us. We have to learn, Minister Sarah, to be about our father's business. But I will leave you with a question since everybody always have a problem with this particular passage of scripture. Uh, they always want to know why God forsaken him. You have to get deep into it to understand that he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. So you think he left his son alone. His son for a moment had to go through a dark time because he went to the cross with our sins on him. For that very reason. But Minister Corey, here's the question that I leave out of this particular passage of scripture. How many times have you forsaken God? We were worried. We, I hear preachers all the time debate this, argue over the scripture, Minister Corey, and, and there's nothing to argue about. We already know what the process that Jesus had to go through. But they walking around talking about God left his son. God didn't leave his son on the cross. You think he was going to leave his son at Calvary and the Bible says that he will not leave us nor forsake us? Jesus did it for us. I've been tasked. Number five. I'm going to put them together. Minister Corey, we're going to get out of here. John 19 and 28. He says, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I thirst. Have you ever been out all day playing basketball, working, or whatever, and it's been pretty hot outside, and we find ourselves in a thirst? And the first thing that we run to, and Minister Corey, I, I, I'm not really a pop drinker. I don't really like it. So uh, you, you sometimes, some folks run for soda. They, they want a pop because they're trying to quench that thirst. Give me a cold pop. They want a cold juice because it's going to quench that thirst. But sometimes in some situations we're in, the only thing that you will find that will quench that thirst is some water. He says, I am the living water. That's the only thing that can really quench the thirst that we have. Uh, so somebody said, what are you talking about, Maze? Well, he's got the water that can quench our thirst. And so many times we run around looking for everything that else to quench the thirst that we have when Jesus has already got it, but we refuse to go to him. So we go everywhere else. We stop at the corner store to get a pop and we can plank that the cooler ain't cold enough. We stop at the gas station and their cooler is out. We looking for something cold we got to learn to look for Jesus we got to learn to fill up with the water that Jesus will give us Jesus here being on the cross he was going through a minister Corey but oftentimes before accused crucifixion they would fix up a cheap a cheap uh, wine out of vinegar and they would put a drug in it and they would do this before the crucifixion to lessen the effects of the crucifixion on them. But when they offered it to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he said he wasn't taking it. Because he didn't want to lessen the pain. Because he knew that he had to go through this situation in order for us to be made right with his father. And he didn't want nobody to say that they helped him along the way that they did this or they did that. Everything that was customary to what the Romans had done, he didn't do it. He said, I'm not taking that. He knew he had to fulfill the scripture, but he wasn't going to take that that they offered him. He wanted to be in his right state of mind when he was going through what he had to go through. Because there's sometimes in life that you have to suffer. 
You have to go through some suffering sometimes. That means that there's some pain that you have to endure. Or there's some distress that you have to go through. Even sometimes it leads into death. But he said, the text says that he had to fulfill a scripture. Psalm 69 and 21 says, they gave me gall for my food. And for my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Because of the suffering that Christ did, because of the agony that he went through, he went through it because now he understands how it feels when we're going through things. He, he went through in human form because he endured all of this stuff. And so the Bible leads me to Hebrews 2 in 17 and 18. He said, for this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he may become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he may make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. It ain't nothing like somebody being there for you that has already had the experience of what you have been through. It ain't nothing worse in the world than somebody giving you some advice and experience and they haven't had none of it. They don't have no experience in what they're talking about. Uh, you have to find somebody that has been through some things, somebody that has bumped their head against the wall along the way to stop you and tell you, don't bump your head there. I can tell you how that feels. But other, it, to anybody else, it looks like a normal wall. I don't bump my head on a wall enough to understand. Man, it's a quarry. I can tell you, don't do that because here's the end results, and I can show you. This was not just a physical thirst. It was a spiritual thirst. You remember in John chapter 4, Jesus asked a woman, and Samaritan for a drink. During the same process, Jesus reveals himself to this woman. He tells us, whoever drinks of the water I give, they will never thirst. Somebody said, well, he asked for water, but the text never seen he got the water. Because remember, she left and went into town and got the people. Jesus had a thirst for the salvation of her soul. He had a thirst for the salvation of her soul. He was concerned about her soul. He didn't need no water. He was concerned because you have to know sometimes how to strike up a conversation with somebody instead of running them away. You cannot go somebody bullheaded. You have to sometimes go in humility. He asked her for a drink, but then during the process, that opened the avenue for the conversation to take place, and then he just went in with it. The Bible says that even when she, when, when she came to fetch her some water, but even when she went back to get the people, the water wasn't important to her because she left the pail there at that time. But I heard the Bible say somewhere else in Matthew, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for their righteousness they will be filled. Our Lord and Savior came to do the will of God. He was born to die as a sacrifice for us all. But what I stop by to tell you today is that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price. But in 2021, I am still reaping the benefits from what he paid over 2,000 years ago. We should shout right there. Somebody says, well, why should I shout? Because you're reaping benefits that you really don't deserve. But because of his grace and his mercy, you have some unmerited 
favors. You have some things that Minister Corey talked about that God have gave him that he didn't even ask for. You woke up this morning in your right mind and you didn't do nothing to deserve it. He allowed you to make it to his house one more time and you didn't do nothing to deserve it. He allowed you to put one foot in front of another and you didn't do anything to deserve it. He came by your sick bed and touched you with his finger of love and you were healed. I thank you on this morning for touching Mother Cooper, Lord. I thank you on this morning for touching all those that's laying on the bed of affliction. But I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for me. On Calvary's cross, you didn't give up when you was in anguish. You stayed up there when you were suffering. And for that, Lord, I say, Lord, I thank you. Let me close you in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He says this. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted because he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wound, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Remember, Jesus came to fulfill the prophecies as well. All the prophecies, all the prophets of old had foretold about the coming Messiah. And Jesus came, and, and he didn't take that, that first drink they offered him, the Roman soldiers offered him, because he knew he had the scripture to fulfill. And he wasn't going to take it. He wanted to be in his right mind anyway. Because any time that we're doing something for our Father, we should not want to be altered. You should not want to have a drug in your system when you're doing the Lord's work. You should not want to have a drink before you go to choir rehearsal. You should not want to do anything that's going to defile the body. In fact, if you would do the search on vinegar, Jesus did take some vinegar. Jesus, Jesus took some vinegar, and sometimes the vinegar cleans, cleans out our impurities in our body. We use vinegar for a cleaning solution. Uh, you, you have something at home that's, past, that's stained up. You put some vinegar and mix it with some water and watch how it will come crystal clean. Jesus had all our junk on him, but I can imagine in my spiritual imagination, he said, I'm going to take a little bit of this vinegar to get him off. I've already paid the price for him all. Our own evangelist Jackie Johnson will be coming with the last two sands from the cross. Get your Bibles out. Put your thumbs in place. She'll be going to John 19 and 30. And then the last one that she'll be going to is Luke 23 and 46. Amen. Amen. Let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let us give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Minister Mays. Amen. And we thank God for the opportunity to preach the word of the Lord to God's people. Eternal God, we thank you for this hour. We thank you for the opportunity to preach your word. God, I ask that you will hide me behind the cross, that the people of God will see you and hear your word and be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. For scriptures will be coming from John 19 chapter 19 and verse 30 and then Luke chapter 23 verses 46 and if I had to pin a topic to both texts pastor minister Corey it's finished and I'm in the hands of God but you got to see me again I'm gonna say it again for your hearing it's finished I'm in the hands of God but you got to see me again. Right. Hallelujah. 
Throughout Jesus' experience on the cross, he gives us several different expressions. And the first expression that we've experienced is the expression of forgiveness. Uh, the forgiving of those that have come against him, those that have mocked him, and those that have gathered together around the cross to witness such a horrific and horrendous act against our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in spite of the pain and the agony that he is experiencing, he is still active in regards to giving salvation to the thieves on the cross. And even though the crowd, people of God in front of him and the people that have placed him on the cross have not shown mercy, but even in the midst of pain and suffering, our Lord and Jesus Christ is still exemplifying grace and mercy to those that will receive salvation. Uh, Minister Corey, letting them know that no matter what situation you're in, it's never too late to receive salvation and to give your life over to Christ. And then looking into the crowd, um, he realizes that his mother, the woman that has carried him for nine months, um, the one who witnessed his birth is now witnessing his death. And at that moment, Jesus shows affection, not because this was affecting him, but he can see the anguish that it is causing his dear mother. So he caused her woman to ease the reality that her baby boy was getting ready um, to die. And so because of his affection and concern for her, after aftercare, he charges one of his disciples who he entrusts so dearly to look after his mother. And now things are turning for the worse on the cross. Jesus is at the point of dealing with a humanistic emotion of realizing and asking a question to the father, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken thee? Um, but regardless of his humanistic emotions, pastor, he still hung there on the cross to fulfill the prophecy that was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the Bible says that by his stripes we are healed. And now one can imagine after going through all of this, Jesus is at the point of thirst. Uh, but it is not a thirst that we thirst from. It is not a thirst that we need a regular drink of water. But it is a spiritual thirst that every scripture of prophecy is fulfilled. And so we've experienced his forgiveness. We've experienced salvation, affection, anguish, and suffering. Which leads us to John 19 and 30 when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And so when Jesus uttered these words, Corey, it is finished, he is simply uh, was implying that everything that he had come to do on earth was finally paid in full. Somebody say he paid it in full. And in order to understand what is happening at the moment, um, we must understand the purpose and the words that has a significant purpose to the cross. Um, for example, the phrase, it is finished in the Hebrew language is called tetelesta, which means paid in full. And what exactly was meant by the prophetic phrase, he didn't say, I am, I am finished. Watch this. He said, it is finished. To say that I am finished, Corey, uh, would suggest that Jesus died in defeat. But it said it is finished, which indicates that the purpose of Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, was finally fulfilled at the cross and his mission was finally done. And then when he left, when he died, he left no unfinished business behind. Um, his finish, he finished the debt that was owed to the Father by mankind, which was the debt of sin, um, to reconcile sinful men just like me and you to a holy God. He completed all of the Old Testament prophecies and the symbols and all of the foreshadowing of the coming to my Messiah. He completed the work of redemption and salvation, watch this, so that we can live as new creations in Christ Jesus. He finished the work to provide an atonement for the sins of all who would ever believe in him. And so my brothers and sisters, what looks like um, defeat at the cross to those who have joined in to crucify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ really isn't what it looked like. Look at somebody and tell them sometimes in life 
life, uh, when you're going through a situation or you're going through a battle, it ain't what it really is. Uh, somebody ought to shout out, I'm going through something, uh, but I'm going to come out because what I'm going through uh, is not what it really looks like. Ah, hallelujah. You ought to look in the mirror and look at yourself on today and say, I don't look like what I've been through. And so my brothers and sisters, um, at the cross, it looks like the feet uh, um, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, but so we celebrate the fact that to them it's defeat, uh, um, but to us it is total victory. And because of what they think is really over, I come to bother you on today, it's just the beginning. Um, the word victory is used um, for a win over an opponent or a difficult problem. Um, the doctors may win victories over sickness, but sometimes they lose. Lawyers may win victories over certain cases, but sometimes they lose. People who have a gambling problem may win and sometimes they may lose. Basketball players will win championships after championships, but if you check the record, sometimes they lose. And in every sport that we can think of, sometimes you may win and sometimes you may lose. But my brothers and sisters, uh, the victory that is spoken of the text in um, on the cross from the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is finished. It's a victory chant. Hallelujah. That cannot be undone. It's a victory that doesn't come with any losses. And so we can rejoice in knowing that we have a Savior. We have a Savior who pays the price for our lives. We have a Savior who paid the price for our backbiting. We have a savior, a minister Sarah, who paid the price for our fornicating, our lustful nature, and our adulterous behavior. And we can still celebrate and give thanks because as it is stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 19, all of this from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus gave us the ministry of reconciliation and that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them let me pause right there that's where you need to be shouting you need to be thanking God hallelujah that he sent his only begotten son hallelujah the only son that he knew the only son that he had to die on a cross for a wretched sinner like us and so the Bible says that and as he committed to us the message of reconciliation. And in the conclusion of the matter at the cross, it is sealed when Luke gives us an account in chapter, Luke chapter 23 and verses 46, when Jesus cried with a loud voice, into my hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he gave up his spirit. Now one took it, Nobody took it, but he gave it. I'm going to say that again. Nobody took his life, but he gave it up with contentment. Watch this. He gave it up with contentment. And this is where I get excited because now things have shifted into which now Jesus Christ, he gives up his life and he put his life in the hands of his father. Uh, the Bible, the Bible says that he cried, watch this with a loud voice, but one would think that a man that is on the cross dying, he got nails in his hands, nails in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head, they pierced him in his side. How could he possibly, a man that is going through all of the anguish and all of the agony that he was going through, how could a man that is on the cross be able to cry out with a loud voice? Uh, look at somebody and tell them, when you're in trouble and the only thing that you can do uh, is cry out to the Father, Father, help me. Father, I need you. And so at that moment, it suggests to us, Corey, that Jesus has simply has confidence in his father. He has confidence in his father. And not only that, his words that he uttered was firm, which now places Jesus in the hands of his father. Aren't you glad that you have a father that you, when you, when you back, backslide, that you can put your hands in the father's hands and know that everything will be all right? Uh, we sing a song that says, oh, in his hands. Come on. I put it all in his hands. Uh, the song says this and that. 
I put it all in his hands. Then it goes on to say, no matter what the problem is, greater or small, look at somebody and say, I put it all in his hands. And the reason why I can have confidence in putting everything in the hands of the master is because I have confidence in the father, knowing that he will never leave me and nor will he forsake me. Is there anybody here that feel like I feel? Hallelujah. Though you slay me, yet will I trust in God. I got to trust him when I can't trace him. I got to trust him when I don't feel like singing, but I got to trust him even in a bad place in my life I gotta trust him with a broken heart I gotta trust him with my bills I gotta trust him with my family is there anybody here that's gonna trust God Jesus left a mark on the cross and he gave us an example at the cross and he simply says I commit my spirit to the father and what that suggests is that he died in the hands of God. That he died in the hands of God. Hallelujah. And because he died, I can live again. Is there anybody that want to live again? I'm going to live for Christ. I'm going to live for Christ. And because he lives, I got grace and mercy. Because he lives, I got an inheritance that's not made by hands man in the book of John chapter 14 he says in my father's house are many mansions and the bible says if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you the bible says that I'm gonna come and receive you unto me you ought to be excited that it's not just finished. The debt was paid. But look at somebody and tell them that Jesus is on his way back. I dare you to lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for dying for me. Lord, I thank you for shedding your blood. It says they hung him high. They stretched he hung his head and for me he died but it goes on to say but that's not how the story ends look at somebody and say in three days somebody say three days he got up with all power in his hands you ought to be glad that we serve a God that has paid your debt in full. You don't have to pay anything else but receive the salvation that God is offering to us through the cross. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I know I'm rejoicing in the Lord. We look forward to Friday, but this is a good Friday. I'm going to go beyond that. It's a great Friday. It's a miracle Friday that took place. Hallelujah. Jesus died on the cross. But when he died on the cross, he died for you and I. But he got up with all power in his hand, all mercy in his hand, all grace in his hand. He covered the price for you and I. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm happy. I'm glad about it. I'm glad about it. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I have enjoyed the word. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus did it all for you and me. Hallelujah. What we couldn't do for ourselves, Jesus did it for me and for you. And I thank him today. I thank God for his son, Jesus, that paid the price for my sins and your sins. Hallelujah. That we all might have a right to the tree of life. That we all can ask for forgiveness and go back where we should be with Christ. 
Hallelujah. I just want to tell everybody today, this is a season for love. This is a season for forgiveness. No matter what somebody did to you yesterday, it don't matter. Today is the day that you can forgive them because Jesus paid the price for all of our wrongdoing, for what they did to you and what they did to me. So we got to ask God for forgiveness, continue to trust Jesus that he's already did it. He paid the price. I thank God for all of you that came in today to join in with us on Good Friday. This season is a season that we should have love in our heart, love in our spirit, and be loving to one another. And don't forget what Christ did for us. Hallelujah. And we're asking that you come in with us on Sunday. Amen. If you want a mighty word, come in with us on Sunday. Amen. We thank you for coming in, joining in with us. We ask that you continue to pray for Second Sweet Home as we pray for you. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you on Sunday. Amen.